super exciting video for you guys today. Um, a lot of you actually requested this. So today we are going to be talking about how to make your very own fully working, all drivers working Hackintosh in 2020. And let me tell you, this has gotten a lot easier than it used to be. So again, just before we begin, thank you guys all so much for 3K. The next goal is 5K and then the goal after that is obviously 10K, but we are getting there. It makes me so happy to know that 3,000 of you guys out there like seeing what I do and that it helps you guys out. So guys, the number of people subscribed watching these videos is now all the way up to 7.5%. So if you like this video, if it helps you out and you're part of that 92.5% of people that aren't yet subscribed, make sure to subscribe, ding my bell, become part of the 360p gang, follow me on my social media here and here because I wanna hear what you guys have to say. Join our Discord, join our Reddit, and let's move on to the video. I love doing that part really fast because it's nice to get it out of the way and I don't want to be annoying you guys with it. Now, there are many reasons for wanting to create a Hackintosh, from just wanting to have some fun and trying to do something new, like me. Plus, I actually needed it to work on iPhones because I do a lot of iPhone repairs, so that was necessary for me, to actually needing the software. If you need software like Final Cut, iMessage, etc., you might need this, but not want to buy a Mac, which is understandable because they're extremely overpriced and just not worth it. Plus, I've actually recently been using it for all my video editing needs because unsurprisingly, Premiere Pro crashes on Windows every two minutes, while on the Hackintosh, it not only works incredibly well, has not crashed a single time and scrubs through the timeline like butter, but it also renders at four times the speed. So I don't know what's up here because this clearly isn't native, but it does seem to work better than Windows itself. So in this video, we are going to be installing macOS Catalina, the newest version of macOS X. Now this version actually doesn't have as many bugs as people think. Not only that, but it fully supports AMD graphics cards, and we will be going onto that in just a sec. Also, you guys out there that have a Ryzen processor with an AMD RX anything graphics card will have this much easier than our Intel friends because all you need to do is download the package I have down below, which are my text and my open core bootloader, copy that right onto your USB stick, replace the files, and it should just work out of the box because that is exactly my configuration right here. So it should just straight up work for you. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do this without a Mac computer because a lot of the videos out there focus on exactly how to do this but you need to have a Mac in order to download the DMG. If you guys had done any Hackintoshes in the past, you will know of a software called Clover. We will actually not be using Clover in this video. We will be using a different software called OpenCore Bootloader. And the reason we are using OpenCore is because I have actually found it to work much better than Clover. In fact, Clover wouldn't even start the macOS Catalina installer for me while OpenCore Bootloader worked with just a few of my texts. I did all the work for you. No need to thank me. Okay, so now that all this is done, let's boot back into Windows. So you guys will need two USB sticks for this. And I know that a lot of people say you only need one, but the way I do this is I use two. And this is actually my open core bootloader USB stick that I plug in anytime I want to boot into Mac OS X. And when this isn't plugged in, it just boots straight into Windows. So what you guys will need is you will need preferably eight gigabyte USB stick or higher. That is preferably USB 3.0. And you will also need a four gigabyte USB stick or higher for open core bootloader. This one doesn't need to be very big. So we've got two of those here. I have an eight gigabyte USB stick and a 32 gigabyte USB stick. What we will also need is we will need my files from open core bootloader. So there we go. Now I have a folder on my desktop called open core and I will have this folder available for you guys to download probably in a RAR or a zip format down in the description below. So next thing we want to do is we are going to take our smaller USB stick because creating the installer is actually going to take a super long time. So we're going to take our smaller one, our eight gigabyte one, and let's create our boot disk utility. The next thing you want to do, and uh, you want to follow this pretty carefully, is you want to open up your boot disk utility, select the USB stick that you want to flash, go into configuration. You want to make sure it's set to Clover. Then you want to click format, click OK, and it's going to download the Clover installer. So it's going to download that and it's going to flash it onto the USB stick. It's created. So what you want to do is you want to go into Clover I and you can see there's an EFI folder here. So you want to open that EFI folder and then you want to go into open core and you basically just want to delete the stuff that's there right now and drag over the open core things. And there you go. 
that's your bootloader created. And let's move on to creating the macOS USB stick. Alexa, play All Star by Smash Mouth. All Star by Smash Mouth. No, 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 no. So what you want to do is you want to right click, run as administrator on um, make install dot bat. And it's going to ask you, do you want to install Python if you don't have it yet? This is about the right time to plug in your USB stick that you want to put install macOS on. So basically once this shows up, it's pretty simple. You choose the USB stick that you want to install on. So we're going to choose number four because we want to install on the Kingston Data Traveler, definitely not on my gigabyte, 256 gigabyte SSD. Then you have to select an option. So we're going to select option O. I think that's O and not zero. Use open core instead of Clover. This is important. And then you just want to click enter. So it says that you've selected your USB drive. All data will be deleted. Just click yes. Okay, so once you've done that, you want to right click on give Mac OS, you want to go run as administrator, and now you're going to get a list of different releases that you can download. So we are actually going to download the latest one, we're going to select option one, and click enter. That's going to download the files you need to create the USB drive. So this is going to take a little while. So we just need to wait for that to complete. So once you have that done, you just want to go back to this window here and you want to go to give Mac OS. You want to go into your Mac OS downloads, public release this folder, then click up here, copy this and paste it right there. Press enter. And now it's going to create your USB stick. So we need to wait for that to finish. And once that's done, I'll be right back to you. So now that you have that done, all you do is you open up your USB stick, go to your EFI folder, open up the EFI folder that I will have in the description for you and drag these files over to here and replace the two files and there you go. So when that's done, you're going to want to open Gen SM BIOS, double click on this, click number two, select config.plist, open up that USB drive again, drag your config.plist in, press enter, and now you can see it's selected up top. Then what you want to do is you want to press three, generate SM BIOS, and type in iMac Pro one comma one, just like that, and press enter to return. Now it's time for the fun part. So now that you have done that, you're ready for the fun. So you want to spam F12, keep spamming it until your boot menu appears for your computer. Then you want to select your USB drive and look at the list really fast because there is a timeout and find external Mac OS based system. My one's number four and boom. You have an Apple on screen. Now we just wait and pray that the installer shows up. And once it shows up, you know you've succeeded and you can breathe. It's happening guys. It's happening. I can see a mouse. I can see a mouse. Oh my God, guys, the camera died. I am so sorry. You missed it. There it is. Okay. So basically right now, I will show you guys exactly what you need to do once you get to this step. You want to go into your disk utility right here, just like that. You want to choose the hard drive that you will want to install on. For me, it's actually this one, believe it or not. No, for me, it's this one. And M.2 drives, for some reason, on Mac OS X, show up as external drives, but they work just fine. So what you want to do when you're here is you want to select the drive that you want to be installing on, click Arrays, create a name for it, and format it as APFS. This is very important, guys. I, at first, didn't format it as APFS, and it actually didn't want to install. So once you've done that, you want to close that, go to Reinstall Mac OS X, click Continue, Agree, Agree again, Select your drive and click install. And that's it guys, let's do an outro. And then you can use that first USB stick that you created, that smaller one to actually boot into Mac OS X whenever you want to and reformat that larger USB stick and do whatever you want with it. So that's it guys, you have successfully created yourself a Hackintosh. For whatever you need it, it's there and it works. And it works really, really well, trust me on this one. The speed on it is really good, everything works. You can use Final Cut, you can use Premiere, you can use anything that you might want to use on a Mac. So guys, 
that's going to be it for today's video. I hope it helped you out. This video was a ton of work, as all Hackintoshes are, but it was totally worth it in the end. So guys, if you liked this video, make sure to give it a like. If you want to see future videos like these, and if I helped you out, make sure to subscribe, ding my bell, become part of the 360p gang, and see you again in the next one. Peace.